this is uh, the third lecture in this third module on neural control in this course intelligent control last class we talked about a uh, network inversion and control the concept of network inversion and control that can we compute what should be the control input given the desired output provided a neural network has been trained to learn a nonlinear dynamics of a given plant. Today, we will be attacking the very foundation of this concept, because network inversion depends on the model of the actual plant in the form of neural network feed forward neural network, whether it is a multilayer network or a radial basis function network. Uh, so, how good a neural network be as a model of the plant? This is the question we will answer today. So, topics to be covered today is uh, system identification using a feed forward network. Uh, robot manipulator, because uh, in this uh, in the beginning of this uh, some lectures we will focus on robot manipulators. Many of the uh, control application will be on robot manipulators on this in this course. So, obviously, we, we will be focusing on robot manipulator a lot. So, robot manipulators uh, this is an open loop unstable system. Hence, uh, the training of a network to learn a robot manipulator dynamic is very difficult. Neural network training and data insufficiency, uh, this is a new concept, novel concept that we will be talking today. So, generation of data, so when we have problem how do we generate data, uh, we will be discussing a new scheme, a novel scheme of query based learning. Uh, inversion can be used to validate uh, the data, validate not the data, validate the model and finally, simulation results. So, we have already discussed some of these points in the last class, but it is worth always refreshing your memory of what we discussed last time. So, this is our nonlinear system. Uh, in state space state space model discrete time state space model so discrete time state space model so what you are seeing is that we have uh, n state output given the present uh, n state and uh, and the present uh, uh, actuation uh, and f is the nonlinearity. Uh, this is the n by 1 vector. Uh, so, the this uh, function is modeled by this neural network, which is a radial basis function network. Although we are we have been discussing radial basis function network, whatever we are telling that is also equally applicable to uh, multilayer network. So, this is uh, x 1 k to x n k u 1 k to u p k. So, these are the input to the neural network. This is the actual uh, uh, state uh, of the plant and this is the actual input to the plant and this is the estimated output of the plant. And the objective is that how this estimated output of the radial basis function network should follow the actual plant response. Okay. This is what is desired and then we can say this radial basis function network has learned the dynamics. So, as we have already said also earlier, the radial basis function network 
it has following components input nodes uh, in this case input nodes uh, uh, at the input nodes the, uh, the, the inputs are uh, the current state vector x k and current uh, control actuation vector u k uh, radial center which is represented by uh, c j and weight vector which is represented by theta and output layer uh, here input is x k and u k and this is x k plus 1. So, i th output of such a network can be expressed uh, in this particular form where uh, this is my weight, uh, this is the uh, Gaussian activation usually, uh, it can be any other uh, basis function, thin plate spline function, inverse quadratic and so forth. This is the norm, V is actually this quantity, the vector of state as well as input and C j is the center uh, parameter, the uh, way, uh, reference vector associated with the center. This has similar uh, dimension as that of the input. So, you can easily see V is x 1 k to x n k, u 1 k to u p k, C j is the jth radial center and the objective is that the radial basis function network output should match the actual plant output given the present state of the actual plant and the present control actuation. So, training of this network can be done in various manner. We can fix the centers uniformly distributed in the input space and the weights can be updated using either gradient descent or using recursive least square, which is normally also very popularly known in the literature as RLS algorithm. Uh, the other approach is that we can use a gradient descent to update both centers uh, as well as the weight of theta uh, in the output layer. Similarly, some advanced algorithm like extended Kahneman filtering can be also used to update the parameters such as centers and weights. And another technique that also is very popular in radial basis function network is hybrid learning, where centers are decided by clustering method which is unsupervised. So, this is unsupervised and weight update using recursive least square or gradient descent or e cap whatever it is. So, this is supervised and hence uh, this is hybrid learning. So, normally center update using uh, either gradient descent or RLS. Uh, 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 gradient descent or E k f uh, reduces the number of radial centers. Now, uh, we will now go to the core of the system identification, how we really do the system identification given x k plus 1 uh, as f x k and u k. What we would like to do is that we would first find a proper architecture of a neural network that would fit to model this uh, system. And uh, so, it is asked to learn the unknown nonlinear function f using a fit for network, it can be either a multi layer network or a radial basis function network. So, what is the first step? The first step would be to generate data from the actual physical system. So, we should have many examples already collected from the system and we will present those examples to this network 
that would model this dynamics. Okay. However, data generation becomes difficult if the physical system is open loop unstable. So, before we discuss about open loop unstable system, we will consider open loop stable system, uh, the simple one. So, this is a very simple uh, nonlinear system which is open loop stable x k plus 1 is x k upon 1 plus x square k plus uh, u cube k. So, you can easily see this is a nonlinear system. So, we generate data. So, what we have done here since this is an open loop unstable system, the system can be excited by random input of uniform distribution from minus 1 to plus 1. We can also take the distribution from minus 10 to plus 10, it is all up to you how do you decide in what dynamic range you want to operate the plant that is up to you. Now, once I decide that my input will be from minus 1 to plus 1, I generate this random numbers what you are seeing here in the first part. Okay. Uh, then, so this is my input data and this is my uh, corresponding output. Okay. So, this is my uh, uk and this is x k plus 1. So, this is my u k and this is my uh, x k plus 1. So, given u k this is my output y k u x k plus 1. So, you can easily see uh, the output is bounded almost between minus 1.5 to 1.5 where input is bounded between minus 1 to 1. Okay. So, this is a fairly stable uh, system we will uh, use this examples, this is 200 examples. So, what you are seeing here is 200 examples. So, we present this 200 example to a radial basis function network, uh, which has this is R B F N, R B F N network radial basis function network. Obviously, the input here will be U k as well as X k. Okay, and your output is uh, x k plus 1. Okay, so, you have two input and one output system. So, what I said here that you take you take a radial basis function network which has uh, two input u k and x k output is x k plus 1 and the training examples are already collected by simulation of this actual plant, actual model and then we trained this radial basis function network with 50 hidden hidden units uh, for uh, 5000 uh, iterations. So, that is each uh, uh, you know, our example training example has 200 data. So, if you look at 200, so 25 times if I pass this examples through the network then uh, finally, the convergence takes place and the RMS error between you can easily see here uh, this is our uh, the desired uh, uh, curve desired response I, I, I wanted a desired response like this uh, and for which the, the network response is almost very uh, similar you can easily see a broken line which is almost superimposed on the solid line, okay. the solid line desired trajectory and the broken line which is almost superimposed on the solid line is actual response of RBF network. Okay. So, so, what you are seeing is that you know identifying a system dynamics uh, for the such simple systems are very fairly simple, uh, they are not so difficult uh, only 5000 times. Uh, uh, if you train the network, it has a beautiful prediction capability. Uh, but uh, today in this lecture, uh, so normally what the researchers have been doing is that uh, given a plant uh, uh, and training examples, they train a network and after the network is trained, uh, the network is placed for uh, or tested on a test data. 
if the prediction is good uh, then we say okay network has learnt but today we will utilize the notion of inversion network inversion uh, to have a better uh, definition or better validation mechanism for a system model uh, soon we will learn today uh, so again as i said the today's topic is a neural model of a robot manipulator uh, so we will be uh, mostly dealing with robot manipulator uh, during our uh, control examples so this is very important so you see that again uh, a n link uh, n rigid link manipulator has this following uh, nonlinear dynamics where mq is the n by n inertial matrix uh, q double dot is n by 1 uh, acceleration vector angular acceleration c q q dot is uh, uh, into q dot is torque arising from centrifugal and Coriolis forces uh, the c is n by n matrix q dot is n by 1 matrix a uh, vector g q is n by 1 vector uh, this is gravitational term. Uh, so, the total torque or the joint torque uh, that is applied to each uh, joints in the n link uh, rigid manipulator uh, this is the torque vector. So, if you apply this torque at the joint actuation uh, then the angular velocity and angular acceleration as well as angular position sorry angular position and angular velocity of the uh, robot link manipulator would follow this nonlinear dynamics. So, this is what is the model of a robot manipulator and uh, in the state space we can define this robot manipulator which has two n states because uh, it has six uh, position vector uh, six elements in the position vector six elements in the velocity vector. So, total uh, sorry um, n uh, elements in the position vector n elements in the velocity vector. Uh, so, the 2 n total number of states control vector is number of control vector is n uh, and desired trajectory it is it is it is required that robot manipulator links should follow uh, um, uh, q the, the desired position vector q d and design uh, desired velocity vector q d dot. Now, uh, earlier we took a simple example and we saw that how easy it is uh, to train a network that can learn such a simple dynamics, but when it comes to the robot manipulator we have problem. Why? The problem is that a robot manipulator is an open loop unstable system. This is an open loop unstable system uh, and uh, so since it is an open loop unstable uh, how do we generate data? We have to have we have to use some uh, you know minimal control mechanism that would guarantee uh, some sense of stability. So, so that is why data are generated using a P D controller P D controller ok. So, that is it is a uh, we put a feedback loop and uh, actuate a P D controller to generate the data control input thus is state dependent because when I am taking uh, the feedback from the output and computing the uh, control action. So, control action is function of state hence this is a state dependent uh, control action. So, what is the what is the harm with that because uh, we lose I uh, will just explain that concept uh, uh, just uh, in a moment. Now, addition of data signal moves data to n plus p manifold meaning is that what is happening that my uh, I have this input uh, input uh, dimension and this is my output dimension uh, this is my output space uh, dimension of output space and input space input dimension is n plus p and output dimension is n. So, my data if I plot a data this data is lying in 2 n plus p dimension 
why because finally, this robot manipulator which has two n states this is two n plus p states this is two n this is n. Okay. So, because two n states and n is the number of inputs two n is the output dimension. So, you can easily see this is 5, this is 5 n. So, the input output dimension is 5 n uh, and in that I am looking at a point. Okay, when I plot a training example that I have generated, it is a point in 5 n dimension uh, in, in a space which is which has a dimension 5 n. Okay. So, so, obviously, uh, if I am trying to train a network okay, R B F n, uh, which uh, the output is 2 n and input is uh, 3 n. Okay. So, when I am trying to train the network, uh, then the data that must be sampled uh, fairly uniformly from this uh, uh, total input output space which has 5 n dimension, but the moment I collect data uh, from uh, collect data from uh, uh, what is it called I, I collect the data from uh, sorry the I actuate the control action which is uh, a function of uh, 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 states then obviously, uh, I have 2 n uh, states I my control u is a function of the states, then what is happening that uh, the, uh, uh, the data in which I am actually dealing that is n uh, 2 n dimension, uh, it is no more 4 n dimension. And by addi adding this dither signals, uh, I can move this data to not n plus p here this is wrong this is actually 2 uh, 3 uh, n dimension. So, still I am I am not able to reach the data points in 5 n dimension right I will still further explain it later. So, state independent control input that can still keep the system. So, the, requ the requirement is that unless I generate control signals during data generation which are state independent uh, I, am, I will not be able to uh, generate data that are fairly uh, distributed uh, over the complete 5 n uh, dimensional manifold. Uh, so, so, this is called data insufficiency that means, uh, the bad news about any neural network is that you have to have a fair collection of data for a physical uh, device modeling if I am trying to model any system, then the data generated from that system should be fairly uh, uh, distributed over the entire space input output space. So, the training of a neural network requires the training data to be uniformly sampled in the input output space. Okay. So, given uh, this is our n dimension and this is a our n dimension and this is my p dimension. Mm. So, when I am my input u is a function of uh, x obviously, uh, I lose uh, because this this x 1 k x n k and x 1 k they are very fairly close. So, I and this is a function of uh, alpha x. So, obviously, I am simply operating the uh, or my data uh, I am generating from the actual system plant uh, uh, using this uh, uh, sorry uh, using this uh, a controller that is state dependent then I am only generating data uh, that is in n dimension. So, what we can do uh, to increase uh, to span that uh, data to n plus p what we can do is that we can uh, add some dither signal to p uh, to the to, to the control uh, to the existing controller like pd controller 
but by adding that what we are trying to do by adding this dither signal here. So, this is my n states this is my um, uh, so this is my uh, uh, if I say this is my n states and this is my p inputs. Okay. So, by adding this dither signal uh, if I do not add this dither signal. So, then I am operating in a manifold of n dimension, but by adding dither signal I am trying to expand this uh, n dimensional manifold to n plus p manifold that is what I am doing. Okay. Uh, so, that is the bad part of generating data for any open loop unstable system, because we have to use some kind of controller otherwise system will become unstable and when system becomes unstable uh, we have uh, we have problem. Okay. So, <coughs> so the, what you are seeing is that this is a PD controller for online data generation and I explained to you what is meaning of dimensional insufficient data. Dimensional insufficient data means the when we train a neural network uh, of a system having n states and uh, p uh, inputs, then we are operating in 2 n plus p manifold. Okay. And uh, we must have training examples uh, that should be generated, uh, which should be fairly distributed over this 2 n plus p manifold. But instead, uh, the mechanism that we have for generation in, 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 in usual practice that can maximum maximally that can span to n plus p manifold. It is never as close to n plus p from n, n to n plus p it can just you know it can expand from n to n plus p manifold. Okay. So, now uh, we will further uh, understand this concept of uh, dimensional insufficient data by taking the example a single link manipulator. The dynamics of a single link manipulator is given as m l square q double dot plus m g l cos q is tau, where uh, this is my single link manipulator and uh, this is my horizontal axis and this is my theta okay. and this is the motor here uh, that and this is the mass which is uh, here uh, when a, a, a point mass. Uh, situated at the end point of the manipulator. So, the uh, so this uh, the assume that m this m is 11.36 this l is uh, 0.432 meter and uh, so given this I, I, I generate data using the same scheme that we just discussed that we have a PD controller and we add some dither signals and uh, you see that uh, what is this uh, dither signal this dither signal is actually a uh, signal that you can like you know the noise white noise uh, step signal uh, uh, ramp parabolic type of signal whatever the signals you can add to this uh, uh, to this uh, pd controller output okay so you see that here is typical uh, training data set or training examples that were generated for a robot manipulator single link robot manipulator. This is our uh, input torque or u, uh, this is the uh, position vector q and this is q dot uh, the velocity vector. Okay. So, because it is single link manipulator, so we have only uh, single po angular position single angular velocity and single joint torque. So, a RBF network that has 100 radial centers which has 3 input u k, q k and q dot k and 2 output which is q k plus 1 and q dot k plus 1. So, this is the structure of RBF network 100 radial centers. So, it took 10 passes so, actually this number of data points training examples were actually 3000 training examples. Okay. 
So, you can easily see 3000 here. So, 3000 training examples uh, and this 3000 training examples uh, over 10 passes means 30,000 iterations. Uh, by doing that train that many uh, training we got an RMS uh, fairly good RMS error called 0 0.003 between the desired target point or desired trajectory and the actual response. So, after training is over uh, usual practice is that we give a test data and then we see whether the desired trajectory is matching with the actual response, but in this case we do both we see whether uh, you can easily see that the desired trajectory and actual trajectory they are this particular thing is both actual and desired. So, one may be very uh, happy to say oh uh, my network has 100 percent learnt the system dynamics, but this is not true uh, you can see that there are two other curves in this figure. So, what you are seeing is that, uh, so this is the, the, the this particular curve is actual and desired trajectory and here uh, this this particular uh, curve is uh, uh, the broken line with the dots is the desired input. So, this is this is desired input and this is the predicted input. So, for a control system uh, it is very fair because what we do uh, given a control uh, uh, plant model we give control actuation uh, uh, so given a, uh, a specific uh, control actuation uh, then we look at the desired trajectory and same control actuation we give to the radial basis function network and see what is the radial basis function network output. If they match uh, then we say it is it's it's a good model which already established in the first case but if he if i now ask this question to this radial basis function network please tell me given this desired trajectory what is the control input okay which is this predicted input so you see that predicted input and desired input although they match but there is some dissimilarity you see they exactly do not match the predicted and actual they exactly do not match, but it is a fair degree of uh, uh, matching, but still they are not a good match. Uh, this is a single link manipulator very simplest system among the robot manipulator, uh, but still there is some disparity. So, due to this disparity uh, we can say that earlier I raised this point that this disparity comes because of the insufficient data we the, to generate dimensionally sufficient data for any open loop unstable system is very difficult. So, for this uh, we would now talk about a query based learning. So, so what we saw uh, is that uh, although actual and desired trajectory they match uh, fairly accurately what they do in which respect they do not match is that desired given actual trajectory to the network what is the uh, input predict uh, uh, the desired input. So, there is difference between desired input and predicted input. So, this we say model validation through inversion and this is a better way to validate our model because for dynamical system both questions are important given input what is output given an output what is input this is very important. So, uh, for that uh, we are now proposing uh, that how can we generate dimensionally sufficient data as you see in the be beginning we told that to generate dim dimensionally sufficient data means uh, we have to have control actuation which is independent of states, but you saw that it is very difficult to generate uh, data uh, sorry control actuation which is independent of control uh, states. So, here is a method uh, that is proposed for uh, uh, for generating dimensionally sufficient data. So, 
So, what you are seeing is that this I say query based learning. What is query based learning? So, the query based learning is proposed to generate state independent control signals, it is very important this concept to generate state independent control signals. So, you see that this is a robot manipulator, we actuate a torque okay. in, no, in, in generally we actuate this torque using P D controller, okay. but now instead of P D controller what we are trying to do that robot manipulator is already trained uh, from initial training data okay. we what, the, what we followed earlier. So, this is called neural emulator or neural model of the manipulator. Uh, we have already have a some form of neural emulator from the previous training examples and those training examples were generated using P D controller. But once we have a preliminary uh, version of a neural emulator, we put this neural emulator and put a network inversion algorithm here. And what this network inversion algorithm does that uh, given you know we, we, we set up some learning trajectory. Okay. So, while we uh, uh, generated some data, we generated data over some trajectory. Now, we will create some new trajectories uh, and along this new trajectory we will invert the network and ask this question what is u what is the control input okay uh, for, for a desired trajectory if my answer is in negative that means if i apply that torque i don't get uh, that specific uh, trajectory, then I store that as a new training example. I hope you are able to follow what I am saying trying to say here that I give a new I present a new learning trajectory to the robot manipulator now. So, along that new trajectory I do the network inversion what I say to this network given a uh, desired trajectory defined by learning trajectory what should be my u and I give that u to the robot manipulator see what is my state. If the, my state is not the desired state the learning trajectory then I put those data in the new example set and I go on and whenever my input exactly predicts what is my uh, target for a current state I reject those examples. So, this way I collect in a basket or in a database more and more new examples and I utilize this new examples for retraining the neural emulator. So, this is a parallel processing is going on okay, where I, I see in which zone the network is not trained this is all completely online this this entire uh, scheme is an online scheme okay uh, in online we can do this we can experiment we can experimentally validate our scheme okay so to summarize this query based learning is very important for you to understand the query based learning is proposed to generate a state independent control signal so you see that in this particular uh, uh, charter or plan we do not have a PD controller. Instead, what we have introduced using the previous training example, the trained neural network, which we say the preliminary version of the neural emulator, this is placed in parallel with the plant, and we place the network inversion algorithm. We provide new uh, learning trajectories. And along the each learning trajectory, we find those regions in the input output space where the neural emulator does not have proper uh, 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 training. That is, how do we do it? You know, given a desired trajectory, 
we invert the neural network neural emulator and we make a decision what should be the control action. The same control action is actuated to the actual plant and then we find out what is the actual trajectory. We compare this actual trajectory with the desired trajectory. If they do not match, then we discard, uh, we, 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 we take that as a new example. If they match, then we discard and this way we create more and more new examples in those zones where the neural emulator is not properly trained and we retrain the neural emulator. So, this is called retraining. So, this is the input space search using network inversion, uh, mm, which we have already talked earlier. I am just refining what is in uh, network inversion. Uh, get x k from the sensor x t k plus 1 from the trajectory planner, assign the input previous uh, in control actuation to the present control actuation and then start iterative inversion. Okay. Uh, so, t equal to t plus 1. So, compute R B F N response x k plus 1 given x k and the initial value of the control actuation. If the network prediction is same as the desired target, uh, then we stop uh, the iteration, iterative loop. Otherwise, we uh, uh, we update the input actuation using either ECAF or gradient search or Lyapno function. But in the last class, uh, we saw that ECAF performing better. That is why here it is written only ECAF. Now, uh, this is query based learning. Uh, the, the, the complete algorithm is uh, like this. Select a new training trajectory from a set of finite number of learning trajectories spanning over the robot workspace. For a desired target vector selected sequentially as per the learning trajectory, compute control input by inversion of radial basis function model to get the desired output taking present state into account. Actuate the control action to robot manipulator and observe joint position and velocity. If actual states of the robot manipulator is following the desired trajectory, then go to step 2 and repeat the process for next desired target vector. Else store the data set as a new training pair and go to step 2. Uh, step 5, if the recall process for the complete trajectory is over, select a new trajectory in step 1 until all the learning trajectories are exhausted. So, this is where the query based learning algorithm is implemented. The input output pairs so generated can be used to retrain the radial basis function network model, so that it can adapt itself for newer inputs. This training can be done both in online and offline, since the emulator is trained before implementing the controller. So, now uh, we will uh, um, talk about a new way of a, a novel way of uh, validating a, a neural model of a robot manipulator uh, and that concept is through network inversion. So, we will see that. So, now we will be first learning uh, the model for uh, we will be training a network uh, uh, radial basis function network that will learn the dynamics of a two link manipulator. The same earlier we have also considered this two link manipulator. A high speed tracking arm is selected. Uh, this dynamics uh, uh, this robot arm can move very fast. Uh, the robot arm dynamics is written explicitly as follows. Uh, you can easily see here, uh, where uh, C 2 1 is cos Q 2 minus Q 1 and S 2 1 is sin Q 2 minus Q 1. Uh, so, here Q 1 and Q dot are uh, Q 1 dot and Q 2 uh, Q 2 and Q 2 dot they are position and velocities and Q 2 dot 
double dot and q 1 double dot their acceleration. Parameters a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4 are point 0, 0.15, 0 0.04, 0 0.03, 0 0.25 kg meter square. So, first we have to generate data to, uh, to find uh, a, a, an equivalent radial basis function network. A PD controller is used to generate the training data to find a neural model of a robot arm. Data are collected as the robot arm is made to track various random peak and place trajectories and sinusoid trajectories. So, what we give we try to uh, uh, through PD controller we try the we try to take the robot manipulator uh, along a either peak place peak and place uh, trajectory that is from one set point to another set point or a sinusoid trajectory. And uh, while tracking random trajectories at each sampling instant uh, various dither signals uh, while tracking random trajectories at each sampling instant various dither signal signals such as Mm, uh, uh, sorry, so various uh, dither signals in the form of white noise, impulses, step functions, ramp and parabolic type of functions are added to PD controller to increase the spread of the training data in the input output space. 3000 examples are collected while the sampling interval is kept at 10 millisecond. The RBF model and testing. The radial basis function model for the two link manipulator has six inputs, because you have two uh, joint torque, uh, two angular positions and two angular velocities. So, six input and four output, two angular positions and two angular velocities. The model incorporates 100 radial centers, training of radial basis function network is carried out using 3000 examples for 10 number of passes that means, 30,000 iterations. After training is over the RMS error for a test data set is found to be 0 0.003. The validation of test of neural model thus learnt is done by finding input through recall process for a given test data. This is the novel way of uh, testing whether your model is accurate or not this is called model validation through inversion. We selected two different sets of test trajectories that are not included in the training set. So, these are the true, uh, uh, this is the first set of uh, training trajectory, uh, this is second set of training trajectory, uh, sorry uh, uh, test trajectory, this is test trajectory 1 and test trajectory 2. Okay. So, this is you can see the first one is sinusoid and second one is exponential. So, this is uh, the first uh, 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 part what you are seeing here is that uh, this is a trajectory is uh, the desired trajectory is sinusoid. So, if I were to simply compare uh, given uh, the input what is the desired trajectory the sinusoid trajectories. So, then uh, the, the from the test data uh, the always the radial basis function network predicts almost very accurately, because the RMS, is, RMS error is 0 0.003. So, the desired trajectory and actual trajectory they match almost very uh, closely, but if I really do inversion then what will happen here you see that uh, what we did here two things, first we took 3000 uh, uh, data set we trained. After taking 3000 data set uh, we saw that actual trajectory uh, the response of the radial basis function network and desired trajectory they match, but if I invert if I ask the question given that desired trajectory what is the control input. So, and then you see the solid one, the solid one this is the actual control input that is given to the robot manipulator and this dotted one which you are seeing here you know you see that this pen uh, tip is moving uh, along this line. So,
So, this this particular one uh, is the uh, predicted input. So, you see that this predicted input is very far away from the desired input. So, I am not now looking at, so because of the inversion I have two different data point. I can look how close it is at the input, how close it is at the output. So, it is a both way validation. So, normally what happens when we normally uh, check the validity of a neural model, we always see at the output, we do not see at the input, but this validation what you are seeing that I am showing the validation at the input. So, you see the at the input the validation is not there in the beginning. Now, what I did after 3000 iterations, uh, I took that neural emulator and used the query based learning and I further trained the network. And after the query based learning you see the see the see the, uh, the, the input predicted, the input predicted is now very close to the actual one, very close to the desired one. So, that is now because of query based learning now the 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 not only the 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 network is able to predict the desired trajectory for a give desired input, but also for a desired trajectory it is able to predict what is the desired input. So, both way prediction is happening and that is a much more uh, a better and accurate model of a, of a system dynamics than what it used to be without query based learning. So, without further explaining you can see uh, this is for joint 1 which, which I showed you. Now, for the joint 2 also before query based learning the, the, the predicted input is very far away from the actual uh, or the desired input. And, but this uh, after query based learning you can easily see the, that the, 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 the predicted and desired they are almost very close. Okay. So, to summarize this model testing through recall process for a sinusoid trajectory, the solid line represents desired input, the dotted line, dotted line represents predicted input before query based learning and the broken line represents predicted input after query based learning. So, before query based learning predicted input hardly matches the actual input. However, the difference is almost eliminated after query based learning. So, uh, so this is the first uh, test trajectory, this is the second test trajectory and the second test trajectory, the trajectory was exponential as I said earlier and you see that the solid line is the desired control input. If I will invert before query based learning, then you see that the, 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 the predicted control uh, a signal is very far away from the actual uh, or desired control input, but after query based learning you see that the desired and the predicted one almost matches. This is for joint 1, this is for joint 2. So, again the similar thing we can again summarize model testing through recall process for an exponential trajectory. The solid line represents desired input, the dotted line represents predicted input before query based learning and the broken line represents predicted input after query based learning. Before query based learning predicted input hardly matches the actual input, however the difference is almost eliminated after query based learning, the similar finding. Now, the comparative performance uh, if we do uh, for 4 test data, uh, so then we have taken 4 test data here. So, then you see that the RMS error before query based learning used to be very, very high and after query based learning the RMS error has been substantially reduced. Okay. So, note that query based learning improves network turning and prediction capability. So, finally, summary in this lecture following topics have been covered radial basis function network model of robot manipulator. How do we model a robot manipulator in radial, radial, radial basis function network? The problem was the dimensionally insufficient data because the robot manipulator is an open loop unstable system. Hence, the state independent control actuation is very difficult to actuate, but this 
specific problem has been uh, 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 sorted out uh, to to a very great deal extent by using the uh, new novel concept called query based learning and the model validation through network inversion is a very uh, key concept that we learnt today in this class. Thank you very much. <laughs>